I am your host, Fat Dag. You're listening to Wise Advice. My weight loss journey failed when I focused on how. It wasn't until I switched my focus to why that I truly transformed myself. Join the show on the web at fatdag.com and follow along on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all at Wise Advice. Send in your comments, your questions, and your celebrations, and I'll include them as part of the show. But before we dive in, remember, when you're out of points, stop eating points. Hey, I'm honored to be your wingman as we walk through this journey together because I believe in you. Well, here we are, episode 103 of Wise Advice. I want to open the show by just giving a huge thank you. Uh, Man, the Connect community, the Weight Watcher community, everyone who's working this journey, no matter what plan you're doing, how you're following it, you're getting it done. My inbox just explodes with some amazing stories of of personal uh, triumph and and way people are just handling this. And it just tells me uh, that we got to just keep going. You know, every day someone shares this show with somebody else and and we continue to grow. We're averaging about eight to 10,000 downloads a day, which completely blows my mind, makes no sense to me, but it all happens because you take the time to recommend this to other folks and they're dialing in. And I I hope that uh, as they do that, they go to the app store, they get the wise advice app. I believe that's the best way to hear the show. But it doesn't matter if you catch it from iHeartRadio, if you're getting it from Stitcher Radio, if you're getting it on Facebook, wherever you're hearing it from, I appreciate that. Thank you for being here. Thank you for sharing. It's an incredible journey, and I'm honored to walk this journey with you. I'll open up the show with Jessica. Jessica writes in. She says, "Uh, Hi, Mike. First off, I just wanted to say thank you so much for your podcast. I'm a faithful listener, and I I want you to know that your podcast is helping me tremendously on my weight loss journey. Now, I'm about to get personal. I have recently discovered that I have a binge eating issue. You haven't really touched on this subject, so I was hoping that you might have some insight on this. I shared a post on Connect about my struggles, and I did get some feedback from others that are going through the same issues. I started Weight Watchers this past March, and I was almost at a 35-pound weight loss. Then the 4th of July weekend happened. I went away on a camping trip for the holiday, and I had a plan in place. My plan was to stay focused, make good food choices, and track everything. But when I got there, I discovered I had no cell phone service, so that meant no Weight Watchers app. I felt lost. I tried my best to write everything I ate down and guesstimate the smart point value, but that didn't last long. By the third day of our trip, I gave up on tracking, and the next two days turned into a full-on binge fest. I've been so focused for the last four months, and then I fell all of a sudden, fell off the plan, and this happens. I woke up on Wednesday, which was my weigh-in day, and I knew that I had to reset. I was disappointed in myself, but I tried really hard not to be angry. I just went back, and I tried to track as much as I could. Then I decided to just move forward. I forced myself to go to my weigh-in, even though I knew I would have a gain. It was 5.2 pounds to be exact. I couldn't believe that in three days, I managed to binge eat myself into a 5.2 pound gain. I felt embarrassed. Even though I was back on track for a few days, it didn't last very long. This past weekend was packed with birthday parties and a graduation party. I ended up binging again. I just don't understand why I am doing this. I've been trying to research a little bit more on binge eating. I know there is more to it. I'm an emotional eater. I want so much to get to goal. I was only 16 pounds away. Now I feel like I set myself back so much, and I'm desperately trying to stop myself from continuing down this downward spiral. I feel helpless. Thank you so much for reading this. I hope you can give me some advice on how I can get this under control. Well, Jessica, uh, first off, the the number one thing you have to understand is, is everything you're going through has happened to probably all of us, if not most of us, for sure. Uh, So it's part of the journey, and the fact is that you understand how to recover from it is more important than than trying to figure out how or why it happens, because I don't think we're ever going to solve that piece completely. So what we have to do is we have to then say, um, you know, hey, I understand this happens. I don't know exactly why. I'm not even sure what the trigger is. I'm I'm certainly not sure how to prevent it. 
but what I can do is I could recognize it when it happens, and then when it when the event is over, I can have a plan in place to then continue on and move on. Now, the beautiful part of your email is the fact that you were down almost 35 pounds, which proves to me that you know how to work the plan, you know how to follow the program, and you have focus, you have discipline, you are able to get it done. You do not lose 35 pounds on accident. It's almost impossible to wake up one morning and say, oh my God, I'm down 35 pounds. I have no idea how I got here. So you've done that by staying focused. You've done that by understanding what your goal is. You've done that by understanding what your why is and carrying forward to make sure that you are focused all the time to get to a 35 pound weight loss. You did that. You did very well. Then you come up on a place where, where, yeah, you have no app for the day. You have no internet for a couple of days. It does, it, it led in your scenario, it led into a binge because you didn't know uh, the, the point value. Here's where I would say, you know, for the next time, you did a great job with this time and the, and the great job you did was getting right back to a meeting room and owning it. That's the great part. Now, how I would recommend you set yourself up for a future success if this scenario were to happen again, and I'm going to tell you this scenario will happen again. So knowing that, you can forgive yourself now for the future time that it happens because it's going to happen. And then what you can do is say, okay, now that I know it's going to happen, how can I recover from it when it does? That's the piece I'm more focused on. Now, as you work the plan currently, you're down 35 pounds, you continue to work the plan you will start to recognize things in your day, in your journey, that you can kind of rely on. You'll get to a point where you'll know the point value of many of the things that you eat often. And so without an app, without a tracker, I can probably do very well successfully tracking for a good three or four days in my controlled environment. I can pick things and I can stay on plan without the app because I've been doing it for so long. I know the values. That's where I always say build the healthy goals and build your habits and build attendance goals. Because if you do that type of work and you continue to work it you know, systematically and daily you're logging in and tracking, you will start to remember how to have success on the program. So that's what you do. And then days that you don't have access to the tools, mentally you remember them and you can get it done. I do not want you to be disappointed in yourself. We know this happens. We know this is going to happen again. Uh, and the fact that you went after the event and you weighed in, you owned it. A 5.2-pound gain, to be exact, over the course of three or four days, 90% of that is going to be water rate weight. It's going to be re- uh, salt, sodium weight. It's not a true 5.2-pound gain. The way to attack that is, is when you get to that scale and you see the number that you don't like, if you know that it's not a true number and then you follow that up with a solid week, two, three weeks of nothing but pure tracking, that number dives down quickly and just instantly goes away. And most people end up getting a much bigger loss leading into the weeks after. So you have to understand that. Now, hey, I'm not an expert on binge eating. I, again, I don't know how or why, or even I, I'm not even able to prevent them. I can't even pre- prevent them on myself. So I can't tell you how to prevent them. The last piece I'll give you is, is I tell you that well, the other thing I do is when I get to the point, if I binge during the middle of a day, and, and for me now, it's, it's pretty rare, uh, but if I do, then it, what, what I do is I've divided my daily points by three, and I know that roughly my dinner is about you know 12 to 13 points for an average dinner most days for me. So if for some reason lunch takes me completely off plan, Uh, Between lunch and dinner, that's my time to refocus and say, hey, I understand what happened. I can't prevent it. But now I know I have 13 points to work into dinner because that's what a normal dinner looks like. I have my 13 points for dinner. I go to bed on plan. I wake up on plan in a much better mood to get this done. This plan, everything we have to do is most of it is just behavior modification. So we have to understand that we can't change some of the things that happen to us. We can only change how we react to them. As we've talked about, nothing is off limits in this plan. You can have whatever it is you want. What you have to understand about that saying, though, is is nothing is off limits, but you have to change the way you eat the things that, that we would normally consider off limits. You can have anything you want. You have to be able to have it in moderation and control it. And when you understand that and you have a healthy relationship with the food, that's when you'll get to goal because you've changed your mind, you've changed your focus, and you've changed the way you deal with it. 
So Jessica, thank you for your email. I'm super proud of you for getting there to weighing in. The absolute best news is if you've lost 35 pounds, you know what you're doing. You can get there again because you've proven that you've gotten there. Continue to work it and we'll see where it goes. Next up, Julie writes in and she says, Hi, Mike. I wrote to you on Friday when I was upset about a food pusher who wouldn't take no for an answer. Now I'd like to fill you in on the rest of the story. Earlier in the day, I had completed my 5 a.m. workout. I pre-planned, I packed, and I tracked my food, and I was feeling confident of a successful day. However, after a couple hours of doing battle with the you-must-eat-this lady, (laughs) I felt ambushed and defeated. This afternoon, I reassessed my status. I had still earned my fit points. She had not taken that away. I still had the ability to adjust what I ate the rest of the day in order to end up the day with a blue dot. So that's what I did. I had an apple and string cheese for lunch. We had a wedding rehearsal dinner to attend that evening, and I was able to enjoy a large salad and a small serving of chicken pasta Alfredo while saying no thank you to the bread and pie that were offered. I ended the day at 34 points and exhaled a big sigh of release relief, food pusher lady hadn't ruined my whole entire day after all. Thanks for listening. I would still appreciate hearing some strategies for handling people like her in the future. Please keep doing what you're doing, Mike. You help me so much. I listen every morning while I get ready for work. It helps set my mindset in the right direction for the day. Julie out of Napanee, Indiana. Julie, uh, I love the opening to your email, how you set the day up. You had your 5 a.m. workout. You pre-planned. You packed. You tracked. All of that stuff, you're right, brings into a, a very confident day. So the, the strategy that you have that works most days, that's what enabled you to beat this food pusher in this scenario. So I understand exactly what you're talking about when you say, you know, you've met the person, you must eat this, you must eat this, have this, have this, have this. It's absolutely frustrating when you run into those people. What I found is a lot of times as they offer the food, they really only want to see you take it. They don't stand there and watch you eat it. So extreme worst case scenario, you can pick it up, turn around, walk away, and throw it away if you've got the willpower to do that. That's one way to absolutely beat them. The other way to beat them, as we've talked about before, the way to beat them is, is by staying focused to your goal. Continue and work that one, you know, one instance like this is not going to ruin your entire journey if you understand that it's going to happen in your journey. But when you get to goal, when you get to an ideal weight, those types of scenarios go away. It's not often now that people don't take my first answer of no thank you because they understand now that that I'm serious about it. You know, so we have to be firm and strong. It's, it's the same adage we tell our kids, right? You've just got to say no. You know, I'm using the cliche, but it's kind of almost that simple is you have to say, no, this is what I need right now. So stop it. You know, thank you very much, but no, thank you. You know, and so that's where they're coming from. Knowing that the food pushers generally, you know, they're trying to just kind of, they're trying to be social, they're trying to be engaging. So you have to treat it very, you know, in a respectful scenario, but you always have to be true to you because you're the one working this journey and, and you can have the ability to get it done. So I love the fact that you reassessed your entire day around this. That, to me, tells me more than anything else in your journey. The fact that, you know, yes, you you, uh, you felt ambushed, you felt defeated, but then you followed the plan of when you're out of points, you stopped eating points, you reassessed your day, you ended the day on plan is amazing focus. You've gotten it done, and I can't believe that we're walking this journey together, and I can't wait till you get to goal and we can celebrate that. Next up, Karen out of Georgia writes in and says, Dear Fat Dag, I've started this letter to you several times in my head over the last few weeks, but I always stop because I'm not quite there yet in knowing my why. As I listen to your podcast, I am reminded that this single question of what is my why is the most important part of my journey, and I keep hearing you say to dig deep to find it, so I guess you could say I've been digging deep. I've been a Weight Watcher member for many, many years. I've been a lifetime member, disappointing myself again and again when I could not retain that status for any length of time. Your podcasts have given me an insight to myself that I never realized until I started searching for my why. 
I keep hearing the word surrender as I start forming my why over and over again, but I haven't been able to pinpoint what I am surrendering to. Am I surrendering to the bad habits or surrendering to new habits? And then I started seeing a shift. Your words have allowed me to reframe my way of thinking like adjusting a lens on a camera. Sometimes you can see a shot one way, but if you turn the lens to focus just a bit one way or the other, suddenly things become more clear. I realized that in the past I always chose my goal weight at the high end because deep down I didn't think I could ever do any better than that. In the past I always lost weight because of an event. In the past I exercised for a quick fix. In the past I measured my success against others. But since I adjusted my lens, I'm seeing things in a whole new way. I have achieved my old goal weight, and I decided I have not stepped up on the scale for the very last time in a weight loss mode. Not yet. I can do better. The event that I'm losing for is called my life. I am exercising daily for attendance, not performance or a quick fix. And my greatest measure of success is that I'm never going to start again. All that said, I finally have my why, and it's pretty simple. I, start, I started Weight Watchers because I learned that I had to surrender. I know I will focus and refocus as I continue on my journey and at the time surrender, but I will not look back. Thank you for your unwavering support of so many. You are modeling a way of life that allows others to achieve their success. Thank you, Karen out of Georgia. Uh, Karen, Great email. And so you've absolutely done it right. You've changed your habits. That's the piece that we talk about that you have to ha- you have to get the success at in order to get the goal. So you've been there before. You understand that. You understand exactly what it feels like. You understand exactly what it looks like. And you're getting it done. In the past, you've exercised for the quick fix or you know, measuring your success against others. Uh, we know that doesn't work. And so you're now understanding that. You're having a complete mindset readjustment that will carry you to goal. What I absolutely loved about your email is that you've understood the the event now that you're losing weight for, the event now that you're preparing for, instead of being a wedding, instead of being a a big event, the event is your life. That's right. you're, You're doing this for health benefits and for the rest of your life. If you understand that, if you do healthy things, the body will react and it'll reward you by being healthy. And then every wedding you go to from this point on, every event you go to from this point on, you're going there with a healthy mindset and getting it all done. So Karen, uh, I'm absolutely honored to walk this journey with you. And and the term that I, I always say is be the prize, right? As other people watch your journey, they see the success that you're having and they want a piece of it. They want to see how fun it is and how much, how much you're enjoying everything you're doing. And if you get to goal and you stay at goal and you maintain it and you're living a healthy, happy life, that is the point of the journey where most of your friends and your peer group, they recognize it. And that's the point when they say, I want to do that as well. There is no looking back. What you need to do at this point is you need to look forward. You need to look forward to a healthy, happy life from this point forward. Karen, congratulations. Currently down 40.9 pounds and doing it. Karen, you don't lose 40.9 pounds in an accident. You've done it with focus and discipline, and I'm proud of you. Next up is Becky. Becky says, hi, my name is Becky. My total weight loss is 17 pounds. I reached my 10% a couple of weeks ago and then down another 0.8 at last week last week's weigh-in. Today, I listened to your April 9th episode. I'm trying to catch up. You talk to someone about their elliptical goal. At 63 years old, I have some arthritis in my knees, and I still try and walk three to four miles five times a week. The pain comes after the walk. I've been encouraged by my trainer to try the elliptical instead of the treadmill or outside walking because it will be easier on the knees. My problem is the elliptical really wears my legs out, and I can barely make six minutes. Starting today, I'm going to go six minutes for 30 days, then increase to 10. Thank you for the wise advice. I wish you good focus as well. Becky. Uh, Becky, first off, 10% is amazing. If you've hit 10% in your weight loss journey, you can hit goal. Let me say that again. If you've hit 10% 
in your weight loss journey, you can hit goal. You don't get additional tools. Nothing changes. The point values don't change. If you've hit 10%, you've proven to yourself that you can stay focused, you can stay disciplined. And I'm guessing that along the way, you weren't perfect. I'm guessing along the way, there were days that you didn't follow the plan perfectly, but you woke up the next day and you started over and you got it done and you persevered and you hit 10%. If you continue doing that, then you can hit goal. Quitting is where you all of a sudden, that's when you give up on your goal, but you have the ability to get there. You've proven it by hitting your 10% and your 17 pound weight loss. Great job there. Now, let's talk about your elliptical. Now, I understand the need to want to do it. Every time you see any fitness video, you watch any TV show that does a fitness show, you go to any gym, what's the one thing you see? You see a trainer in there that's yelling at you to push it, go harder, go harder, you can do it, you can do it. And while that's motivating, that's certainly motivating for someone who's already built the habit of going. For, For many of us, we're not there yet. You know, and if you can barely make six minutes on the elliptical, then I'm, I'm dang proud of you for doing that. I want you to back down the intensity. I want you to make that six-minute mark, and I want you to get to that six-minute part mark where you all of a sudden feel like you can do it again the next day. And the next day, you do it again. And so if you back down the intensity, and you just take it easy for those six minutes, and you do that five, six, seven days a week, In your mind, what you're building, you're building a muscle that doesn't get worked out on the elliptical. That muscle gets worked out by you building the healthy habit. And then suddenly, your daily routine is to get to a gym. And your daily routine is to hop on the elliptical for six minutes. And then you're doing that. And then slowly, you can do that for 30 days. Then you can increase the time. And then at some point, you'll increase the intensity. I would much rather you start slower with the intensity and and continue with the consistency because that is the plan that'll set you up for long-term for life. That's what I refer to as an attendance goal. At some point, your body will start begging for performance goals, but you don't need to give it a performance goal until you've clearly built a healthy habit of attendance. So Becky, thank you for your email. Congratulations again on your 10%. Next up, Mark says, hi, Mike. Uh, This is Mark from St. Paul, Minnesota, and I'm an online-only member. My connect name is Laughing Buddha. Uh, I am finally writing in to tell you I made my 10% goal, and I've lost 30 pounds. Since joining on April April 24th, 2017, I decided that a 10% goal was a good goal to start with, and my doctor agreed. This is my second time trying Weight Watchers since 2011. The tools are so much better than back then, and I'm absolutely thrilled with my results so far. It's only taken 122 days to get here, and after my weigh-in this morning, I immediately set another interim goal of another 10%, as I need to break down my goals into smaller chunks to keep me focused and dedicated. I haven't decided on a goal weight because I'm following your wise advice, and I'm concentrating on a feeling rather than a number. I am so grateful for your podcast and my Connect Tribe, and I'm also lucky enough to have coworkers and friends that also follow the plan. I am truly supported in my journey, and I look forward to what's possible, and I will keep you posted on my progress. Thanks for your service to our country and to our Weight Watcher community. Thank you, Mark. Mark, 10%. You just heard me talk about 10%. If you hit 10%, you can hit goal. You're down 30 pounds. That's incredible. It's focus and discipline. You don't do that on accident. And I'm very glad to see that what you've done is you've broken your journey up into small 10% increments. That there keeps you focused along the way, and it gives you a continual milestone to hit for. And, and you absolutely have the, uh, the right uh, mindset going into it is, no, we don't know what our goal weight is. What we know is that we're going to make the goal is to be healthy. The goal is to make healthier choices more often than not. The goal is to make sure that we're working out more often than not. When you do all that for the rest of your life, you will settle into a weight that you're happy with, that you're comfortable with, and then at some point you'll hop on the scale and you'll say, you know what, I do not want to lose any more weight. And the fact that you've hit 10% proves to me that you can do that. So thank you for setting the small goals. Thank you for keeping yourself focused because that is what builds this community. When you continue to have the success you're having 
and you share it the way you have, there was someone else right now, Mark, listening to this story and saying, you know, I, I didn't know I could do it. But Mark did it. And if Mark did it, then I can do it. And that is what builds this community is that we continue to have the success that we're having. We continue to celebrate along the way and we are a much better community because of it. So Mark, thank you for your email. Uh, I cannot wait to hear it when you get to goal and I want to celebrate with you. What is it that you're celebrating? Let's share it on the air. Go to fatdag.com, click on listen now, send in your celebrations, your comments, your questions. I'll work them in as part of the show. I want you to email in your celebration because I want you to be proud of what you're doing. I want to share it with the community so that everybody knows that this journey is absolutely doable. We can get it done together. And we were, we were working together to do that. So that is going to do it for this time. Remember, losing weight and getting healthy has nothing to do with luck. You have to remain disciplined and focused. Set your sights on your goal and go after it. I wish you good focus.